Welcome. Welcome again to the best Florida family law podcast. This is attorney Jonathan Jacobs of the Jacobs Law Firm. We have again for you a really, really fascinating question from another listener. What do I do if I am at a mediation and not all issues can be resolved? In other words, what happens if two spouses are at a mediation and they can agree on some issues, but not all issues? What then do you do? What can you do? Well, here goes. Suppose husband and wife are at mediation and they have a parenting plan, 100% completed, drafted, done, signed, sealed, and delivered. And they then cannot agree on child support calculations, on a proper amount for alimony payments, and they cannot agree on what to do about their marital home. Does that mean that everything has failed and nothing has been achieved? You can certainly sign that parenting plan at mediation. You can certainly agree to it and then resolve a substantial part of your case. Just because all issues are not resolved does not mean that you are in a position where your case is now a total failure or mediation is a total failure. You can have one agreement and not all agreements. In fact, let's take a second hypothetical scenario. Suppose, if you will, that two people have agreed on the sale of their marital home, but they have not yet agreed on how the proceeds are going to be allocated. For example, suppose that these parties have debts of $100,000, but they cannot agree on how much each party should receive based upon whose debt is it. Maybe some of it is student loan debt. Maybe some of it is debt that has been accrued just after the separation of the parties, but prior to the filing of the petition for dissolution of marriage. It is entirely possible that that disagreement as of the date of when we should value those liabilities or debts for credit card debts and ordinary daily living expenses, needs and necessities. It is entirely possible that these two people cannot agree on how much of the debt belongs to whom, or if it is even marital. While they may agree on some major issues, who gets what car, who's assuming what uh, amount of car loan, how to divide personal property, furnishings, couches, um, jewelry, family heirlooms, personal property, who is going to receive the boat, who is going to receive the dock, who is going to receive X, Y, and Z, A, B, and C. They may agree on most things, but not that ultimate distribution of the proceeds of the sale of the home. That then can be created into a partial mediated or marital settlement agreement. A partial means that there are still some issues that are unresolved. Nothing should necessarily prohibit you and your spouse from resolving issues in your case. While we take a view generally that things are of a totality of the case, in other words, everything impacts everything else, I call it the falling domino theory. If one part of your case that before you went to a mediation or before you exchanged a settlement offer seemed impossible to resolve, that suddenly can be resolved, then why not use it as an opportunity to then get the next issue resolved and the next and the next and so on and so forth? Why miss out on an opportunity to resolve 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80% of your case just because some other issue remains? Some issues can be isolated. Some issues can be resolved without a resolution of all other issues. And that is called a partial settlement agreement. Let's take a hypothetical scenario number three and relate this back to parenting. Suppose that you have a complete marital settlement agreement about your finances, signed, sealed, and delivered. Everything is done. However, you then have a parenting plan. You've agreed to equal time sharing, which is the presumption in the state of Florida. So that part is great, wonderful, done. You've agreed to shared parental responsibility. You have agreed to a variety of other provisions that are right down the middle. Nobody is calling balls and strikes. This is just straight neutrality right down the middle. What then happens if one provision is disagreeable? Maybe one party wants control over religion. 
maybe one parent wants to have school designation authority for that minor child or children. If one issue is insurmountable and cannot be agreed upon, but it does not necessarily impact everything else, you might want to consider entering into a partial parenting plan. Otherwise, if you do not, all issues remain unresolved. All issues remain outstanding. And then you may need a second mediation. You might need a hearing for temporary relief. Or you might even need to go all the way to trial on all issues rather than just one isolated issue that will minimize your expenses and take a fraction of the time you and the court otherwise would have allocated on that specific issue. This has been another episode of the best Florida Family Law Podcast. My name again is Attorney Jonathan Jacobs of the Jacobs Family Law Firm. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Please remember nothing that we have stated here today is legal advice. Our show is intended solely and exclusively for reference, for entertainment, and as a manner and a guide for you to learn a little something about family law, which is never easy to do without a lot of study, a lot of practice, and hopefully none of you will find yourself in a situation where you need it. Thank you so much. Have a great day.